Welcome to a lesson on surface integrals where the surface of integration is a parameterized surface. If we have a smooth surface given by r of u v and f is a continuous function, then the double integral of f integrated over the surface s with respect to s is equal to the double integral in the u v plane as we see here. If we write the function f by replacing x with x of u and v, y with y of u and v, and z with z of u and v. And differential s is equal to the magnitude of this cross product, differential a, where differential a is either du dv or dv du. And in the video on area of a parameterized surface, we discussed where this extra integrating factor came from when converting from differential s to differential a. And it comes from the area of a very small tangent plane. And before we take a look at an example, I want to emphasize here that this video only focuses on surface integrals where the surface is given as a parameterized surface. I have a couple other videos that show how to evaluate a surface integral when the surface is given as z equals g of x, y, as we see here. Notice that if this is the case, differential s is replaced with this integrating factor times differential a. So let's take a look at our first example. We want to evaluate this surface integral using a parametric surface where our function is x times y and our surface is x squared plus y squared equals four and z is on the closed interval from zero to eight only in the first octant. So let's first parameterize our surface. Because this is a cylinder, we'll use cylindrical coordinates. So we'll let x equal two cosine u y would be two sine u, and then z would just be v. And because we're in the first octant, u is gonna be on the closed interval from zero to pi over two, and v will be on the closed interval from zero to eight. So let's work on determining the magnitude of this cross product. So let's go ahead and find the partial derivative of r with respects to u. That's going to be negative two sine u, two cosine u and zero. Then the partial derivative of r with respects to v, that'll just be zero, zero, and one. So to determine the cross product of these two, we'll evaluate a three by three determinant where the first row is i, j, k. The second row will be negative two sine u, two cosine u, and zero. Third row will be zero, zero, and one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate this using the diagonal method. So I've already copied the first and second columns on the end. And now we'll sum the product of these three diagonals and then we'll subtract the product of these three diagonals. That'll give us our cross product. So we're gonna have two cosine u i plus zero plus zero minus zero minus zero and minus a negative two sine u j. So it'll be plus two sine u j. So now let's go ahead and determine the magnitude of this cross product. So I'll have four cosine squared u plus four sine squared u. Now if we factor out the four, we're gonna have cosine squared u plus sine squared u, that's equal to one. Well the square root of four would be equal to two So let's go back and take a look at the problem again. All that work gave us this magnitude equal to two, and now we're gonna rewrite our function x times y as a function of u and v, where x is equal to two cosine u, and y is equal to two sine u. So we'll have two cosine u, two sine u, times two, differential a. So again, x was equal to two cosine u, y was equal to two sine u. And then we had the magnitude was equal to two, 
And then for differential A, let's go ahead and write this as dV du. Remember, V was on the closed interval from 0 to 8, and U was on the closed interval from 0 to pi over 2 because we were in the first octant. So remember, our function was equal to x times y. That's why we have 2 cosine u times 2 sine u. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull out the 8 and start to integrate. Integrate with respect to v is just going to give us v times cosine u sine u. Replacing v with 8, we'll have 8 cosine u sine u minus 0. So we'll have 64 cosine u sine u. Now here we'll perform a substitution. Let's go ahead and let w equal sine u. So dw is going to be equal to cosine u du, which is good because all of this will be dw, and this will be w to the first. So that'll give us w to the second divided by two, or 64 times one half w to the second, where w is sine u. And then the sine of pi over two is one. One squared is one, minus sine of zero is zero. So it looks like we have a value of 32 for our surface integral using a parametrized surface. I think we'll stop here on this video and we'll take a look at a second example in part two. Thank you for watching.